Hey there, Dale here with Pacific Sun Technologies. Now in today's video, I wanted to talk about the monitoring system that's available with the EP Cube that we offer. Now their platform is a little different than what you would typically see from other providers like Tesla, Enphase, SolarEdge, because their gateway allows for some unique connections for individual monitoring of some of these particular devices. And at first I was a little hesitant at, you know, wanting to talk about it, but as I've looked at some of my customers' usage on these and, and gotten feedback from them uh, on their experiences, you know what, I, I really think EP Cube is onto something with this particular monitoring platform that they've integrated into their gateway. Now, if you're not familiar with the EP Cube from Canadian Solar, I strongly recommend you checking out one of our videos that talks about it. We've done some installations. It's an awesome product that's AC and DC coupled. Uh, you can learn more on our website and of course you can request a quote from us by using the link down in the description below. It's a phenomenal product with a great warranty. Now, before I dive in, be sure to subscribe to the channel. So right when you open up the app, it basically this is your home screen. It gives you a great overview of what's going on within the household. You're going to have your backup loads, your non-backup loads, and this is what's different than the other manufacturers. They don't divide up this information. Of course, you get your grid consumption, your solar production, um, but you have EV monitoring and you have generator monitoring. Now this customer doesn't have the EV uh, integration, you know, they didn't have an EV charger to be connected to the gateway, they didn't have a generator. Most of our clients aren't going to have a generator if you live in California, it's kind of hard to do the generator um, just because of the setback requirements for standby generators if you live in a track home. But for those of you in Texas or Florida, this is really cool because you can actually see how much power and energy the generator provides to the battery in your home. And then dividing up your non-backup loads with your backup loads is also valuable because you get a good idea of what is using more power. So as you can see for this particular customer, they're currently generating, if we tap on it, around 3.19 kilowatts of energy. This is live, so that's a cool feature you don't always get is live data from some of the uh, software platforms. Enphase gives you a 15 minute increment, that's great, you know, but ultimately it is a 15 minute delay and live data is really valuable during a power outage, you know, so that way you know what is it going on. Waiting 15 minutes could be the matter of the system shutting off because you're used too much power or you overloaded it. So being able to see how much power you have available to you is pretty handy. And then of course how much you're consuming. So um, you can see right now he's using around 520 watts for this particular customer. Nothing on their backup loads. And as you can see all I'm doing is tapping on these icons to actually see how much power I'm using for this. So the home is, the solar's obviously charging the battery and then it's powering the non-backup loads. His backed up loads don't have any consumption. For this homeowner it was mainly, you know, some lights and outlets. It, was, it wasn't a big backup loads. It wasn't in a whole home or something like that. And basically what's backed up, he's not really consuming any power at this particular time. But that EV feature that's in here, this homeowner didn't have the EV integration, he didn't have an EV charger to integrate. But if you do, you can actually monitor how much power your EV is taking and then also how much energy it takes per day to charge it. That's really cool to have in here. I've already touched on the generator for those of you that would want that integration. My gripe would be I wish that the EP Cube team would remove these icons if you didn't have those capabilities. Like, you know, if you didn't have the generator, cool, let's just get rid of it. And, and then if it comes, if you do get it later, then that icon would appear. Same with the EV, if you don't have it now, I don't feel it should be on the screen, but I, honestly, I think that's kind of a small thing to, to kind of consider. Uh, the contribution right now is 30, 37% for this homeowner. And this is where you can modify your settings. So you can turn on weather watch. So if you live in an area with a high fire zone or high winds or 
hurricanes or something, you know, having the weather watch on, it'll keep track of an emergency situation and make sure the battery is fully charged if a weather alert goes out and you could potentially have a power outage. This isn't exclusive to the EP Cube. Tesla offers it, Enphase offers it. I feel most high-end batteries uh, offer this feature. Um, and then you have your self-consumption mode where you can re adjust your state of charge reserve. What this means is, if you're using your battery for self-use every day, you keep a certain reserve of that battery off to the side that's always available during a power outage in the middle of the night. You can move this down, you can move this up. It's really up to you. We recommend you just having that battery get to midnight and then you can, because your rates for time of use should be super cheap from midnight to 8 a.m. So it shouldn't matter if you're using grid power, especially if you own an EV, you really don't want to charge your car from the battery unless you just have a massive amount of storage, of course, but really you should be keeping the battery for self-use and for emergency power outages. Uh, the backup mode is pretty self-explanatory. That just puts you in full backup mode. And then uh, time of use. Again, this is if you want to just program the battery for arbitrage, which is great for the solar building program. So you can program the battery when it will you know, basically charge from the solar and then uh, discharge to the grid during those peak times where the grid needs that energy in the evenings and will pay you a lot of money and you just submit these changes. Um, EV charging during a grid outage. This is a cool feature that n no one has. I, I, Tesla doesn't have it, Enphase doesn't have it. I, I think Enphase is working on it on their next generation, but as of right now, they don't have this feature. And what this means is that if you have an EV charger and during the day you have enough solar production, even, it doesn't necessarily have to be during the day, but it could be at any time, even off the battery, you can reserve a certain state of charge for the battery and so the so the battery will charge your car um, this i think is really valuable for those of you that live in areas with ongoing power outages that might last several days or weeks at a time and you have an electric vehicle now you can actually charge your car this you have it plugged in and the system will like hey the battery's reached this state of charge i can go ahead and charge my car because there's enough battery capacity for me to do that. That is really cool that's just built into it. Now this is all accessible from the home screen. You can see the operational status is normal, communications online. Uh, this is connected Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or cellular. It comes with 5G built in or LTE. And then, and then we have it connected to the homeowner's Wi-Fi. If you go into the granular data, this kind of gives you your overview. Now, all manufacturers um, of batteries tend to give you a 24-hour usage case of, of chart data. And you can see, you can kind of modify how you're looking at uh, your usage. So you can see from midnight uh, all the way so far today at 11.30, this, this homeowner has used, you know, 3.83 kilowatt hours of energy from the grid because the battery again wasn't trying to discharge all night and we can turn on the solar we can go back a day so if we look at maybe you know the fourth of july a lot of people you know we're having a good time on the fourth of july so those are our backed up loads non-backed up loads and then there's the battery in there uh, we don't have the ev charger we don't have the generator so we can off do that and then we can rotate this and we can kind of just go and tap on the screen and at certain time increments we can actually review the data and see what was going on so the battery state of charge was at 25 percent this was at like three in the morning uh, the grid usage was around 480 watts uh, and that was going to the backup loads see the data goes beyond just you know what the solar is providing and the battery are providing it actually knows where the energy is flowing because it all goes through the gateway so that's really cool uh, to see this and then you can start to see solar production ramping up and you can see by you know 3 p.m the battery is fully charged and you know the home was using the energy as the battery was kind of trickle charging and then once the battery pretty much hit 100 percent state of charge or pretty close 90 95 percent you can see he's he's exporting to the grid over 3,000 watts 2.94 kilowatts and then you can see the air conditioner turning on and off over here those are those sharp lines in the afternoons that the battery had no problem providing energy to if there's a grid outage obviously you would be you know more conscious of the energy that you're consuming because you want your battery to last as long as it can but 
yeah, I mean, this is really cool. And you can, you can take some of the data out and put it back in there. And it tells you what's going on, that they've done a pretty good job of really giving you a good visual. Now you can change it to monthly if we wanted to look at all of June. So if we go over to June, we can see the energy trend for the household. We'll blow that up. You know, so we kind of see the ups and downs of the solar production, the battery, how much the backup loads are using, how much the non-backup loads are using. You know, you can really get some granular data to help you get a better understanding of your energy usage and if you can do anything to improve on it to be more energy efficient yourself. So, of course, if you need to service the system, you know, you can make that submittal right within the app. It goes to the EPCube team and it goes to your certified installer that set up the system. So that way you get both ends, you get the manufacturer and you get the installer contacted in one try all within the app. Really, really nice. Mainly the home and the data page are going to be your go-to sections for monitoring the EPCube system. You know, there's not a bunch of little hidden pages that you need to worry about. Uh, the EP Cube doesn't have module level monitoring, so if it's AC coupled and you had the Enphase system, you know, you'd have to still use the Enphase app to see the individual modules. But if you're doing it DC coupled, all you're really focused on is your power production. You want to make sure you're generating what you should be, and you can see that in live time to ensure that everything's working as it should be. And no different than the Tesla Powerwall Plus, which is a, you know, DC coupled solution. You don't get module level monitoring. You just get to see that live data that's really valuable. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I kind of just wanted to do this overview on the EP Cube. I'll probably do another overview on another monitoring system like Enphase because I know we get a lot of customers that are really interested in the Enphase one. So be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have any uh, particular questions or you're interested in getting a quote for the EP Cube, be sure to use the link down in the description below. We would love to have you as a customer.